So let's look at example two, using symmetry to sketch a polar graph. And so let's go ahead and run the tests here. Now I did talk about that if it's cosine, it's most probably going to be symmetric with respect to the polar axis. If, if it's a sine of uh, theta, then it's probably going to be respect, uh, symmetric with respect to the line of pi over two. So let's go ahead and run the test with e the cosine of theta. So what we're gonna do is we know it's probably symmetric across the polar axis. So we can plug in our regular r and then negative theta. So r equals three plus two times cosine of negative theta. And so notice what happens is that it is the original equation back, right? That doesn't change anything. So that does tell us that it is going to be symmetric across this line. And although we don't need to necessarily run that test if we know this piece over here. So let's go ahead and graph this. So just more practice in graphing here. So we know it's symmetric across the polar axis. And so let's go ahead and graph by choosing some points here. So zero, let's, if we plug in zero, uh, we have three plus two times cosine of zero, and then cosine of zero is one, so three plus two is five. So we know that it's here. And then if we plug in pi over six, so we wanna go every pi over six or 30 degrees. Um, and so we plug in pi over six, that's going to be two times root three over two. So that's gonna be three plus square root of three, which is about 4.7. So then that gives me a little bit better idea of where that is. So again, you could just plug it in your calculator to figure out that uh, decimal to help you out. Now, because we know that it's gonna be symmetric across the polar axis, now down here below 11 pi over six, it's going to be a 4.7 as well. So we're just using symmetry in order to help us graph these points. Now let's try pi over three. So three plus two times positive a half. So that's gonna be three plus one or four. So at pi over three, we're at four. And then I know it's also on the other side. Then let's take a look at pi over two. Cosine of pi over two, that is going to be zero. So this is just three. So three is here and then negative three down here. And then let's try two pi over three. At two pi over three, we have three plus two times negative a half. Cosine of two pi over three is negative a half. So this is three minus one, which is a positive two. So two pi over three, we're at one, two. And then at four pi over three, we're also at two. Then let's try five pi over six. Five pi over six is three plus two, and cosine of five pi over six is negative root three over two. So we're looking at three minus square root of three, which is approximately 1.3. So just a little past one, right over here on this side and also on the other side here. Then let's try pi. So cosine uh, three plus two cosine of pi that is gonna be three plus two times negative one. So three minus two is just a positive one. So it meets right here. So then if I were to draw the curve, notice there's a little dimple here. This is the graph of three plus two cosine of theta. And so what this is called, it's called a limousin. <laughs> Very neat word. And then later in this section of 10.8, we'll take a look at all the, a lot of special curves in here. So like the limousin, the lemniscates, and then some rose petals. Now for now though, I want you to go ahead and try this next example. Sketch the graph of r equals three plus two sine of theta. You could try the uh, symmetry test here if you would like. Um, and then, you know, you'll kind of see what happens with that. But after that, you just need to pick points and graph it and see what you get. So trying this out, so if you plugged it in, uh, notice that the, in this case, it's gonna fail every single test and that's okay. Uh, but when you plug in points, so again, you do wanna plug in every pi over six because it gives you a better shape of what's happening, a better idea of what the shape is going to be. This is also a limousin. It's just uh, the symmetry is across the line pi over two. And then we'll get some more practice in graphing these. And so the next thing we're gonna kinda take a look at is we're gonna look at two additional aids in sketching graphs of polar equations. 
so knowing the theta values for which r is a maximum and knowing the theta values for which r equals zero will also help us in sketching some graphs.